dear students fluorometry method is used in the analysis of drugs like riboflavin thymine reserpine quinine etc as well as in the analysis of trace amount of drugs metabolites proteins hormones steroids in tissues and fluids this technique is also very used in the treatment and the diagnosis of cancer in the recent year so today we are going to discuss about different factors affecting and quenching effect in the fluorescence spectroscopy there are two main factors which can affect the fluorescence the first is the intrinsic structure of a molecule this is itself responsible for the difference in the fluorescence and the second is the environmental factors one by one we can discuss both first the intrinsic structure of a molecule in the intrinsic structure we can start from conjugation conjugation means presence of alternate double and single bond in a structure in our previous lectures related to chromophore in uv we have discussed that chromophores are the unsaturated groups that absorb uv light and also in our previous lecture of principles of fluorescence we have discussed about the fluorophore and these are also the group which are similar to the chromophore and they show absorbance in the uv light because they are conjugated so conjugation can increase the fluorescence compounds with a fused rings are found to be specially fluorescent and the extent of fluorescence is found to be directly proportional to the number of rings in the molecule for example anthracene is more fluorescent than naphthalene and the naphthalene is more fluorescent than the benzene the aliphatic compounds which are conjugated can also be fluorescent but the alicyclic compounds are not fluorescent in nature the second important point is the structural rigidity in a molecule favors fluorescence if the structure is rigid it is more fluorescent and the flexible compounds are less fluorescent example phenolphthalein and fluorescein phenolphthalein and the fluorescein phenolphthalein is non fluorescent while the fluorescein is fluorescent because of rigidity in the structure when a structure is rigid it remains in one plane and when a structure remains in one plane the pi electron get proper time to absorb the uv or visible radiation but when the structure is flexible then it transform in different 3d structures and the electron will not get proper time to absorb radiation another example is a biphenyl and a fluorine if we compare both these structure then the biphenyl ring is flexible in nature but the fluorine ring is rigid in nature so the fluorine molecule is more fluorescent than the biphenyl ring now coming to the nature of the substituent group the fluorescence observed with the rigid cyclic molecules with a pi bond is found to be enhanced by the electron donating groups like nh2 or oh and och3 electron donating group increase fluorescence because they donate pi electrons and these pi electrons can easily absorb the uv light so fluorescent property increases but the electron withdrawing groups such as coh no2 etc can tends to reduce it
Now the next intrinsic factor is heterocyclic compound. Heterocyclic rings which contain nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur can have more lone pair of electrons. And if there is more lone pair of electron, the electron can go from singlet excited state to the triplet excited state. And then they can return back to the singlet ground state. And this will emit the light and the process is called as fluorescence, phosphorescence which is a radiative pathway. So the heterocyclic ring, pyridine, quinoline, isoquinoline all contain nitrogen along with other heterocyclic rings which contain oxygen and sulfur are fluorescent and phosphorescent. Aliphatic and alicyclic carbonyl compounds or highly conjugated double bond structures are also so fluorescence. Now coming to the second part that what are the environmental factors that can affect the fluorescence. The common factors which can affect the fluorescence are temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen and the solvent. So first that is temperature. A rise in temperature is almost always accompanied by a decrease in fluorescence. Decrease in fluorescence. The change in temperature causes the viscosity of the medium to change which in turn changes the number of collisions of the molecule of the fluorophore with solvent molecules. The increase in number of collisions between the molecules in turn increases the probability for deactivation by internal conversion and the vibrational relaxation which is a non-radiative pathway as we have already discussed in Jabulinsky diagram. If we talk about another factor affecting that is the viscosity then the effect of viscosity just opposite to the effect of temperature. As we increase the viscosity, the collision between the particles decreases and the fluorescence intensity increases. Now coming to the next environmental factor that is the pH. Relatively small changes in the pH can sometimes cause substantial changes in the fluorescence intensity and spectral characteristics of fluorescence. For example, serotonin. Serotonin shows a shift in fluorescence emission maximum from 330 nanometer at neutral pH to 550 nanometer in strong acid without any change in absorption spectrum. In the molecules containing acetic or basic function groups, the changes in the pH of the medium changes the degree of ionization of the functional groups. This in turn may affect the extent of conjugation or the aromaticity of the molecule with which affect its fluorescence. For example, aniline. Aniline shows fluorescence while in acid solution it does not show fluorescence due to the formation of anilinium ion. Therefore, pH control is essential while working with such molecules and suitable buffers should be employed for the purpose. The next environmental factor is dissolved oxygen. The paramagnetic substances like dissolved oxygen and many transition metals with unpaired electrons dramatically decrease fluorescence and cause interference in fluorometric determinations. The paramagnetic nature of the molecular oxygen promotes inter-system crossing, promotes inter-system crossing from singlet to triplet state in other molecules. The longer lifetimes of the triplet states increases the opportunity for radiation less deactivation to occur. The next environmental factor is solvent. The changes in the polarity or the hydrogen bonding ability of the solvent 
may also significantly affect the fluorescent behavior of the analyte. The difference in the effect of the solvent on the fluorescence is attributed to the difference in their ability to stabilize the ground and the excited states of the fluorescent molecules. Besides solvents, polarity, um, besides solvent polarity, solvent viscosity and the solvents with the heavy atoms also affect the fluorescence and the phosphorescence. Besides solvents polarity, solvent viscosity and the solvent with the heavy metals can also affect the fluorescence and the phosphorescence. Increased viscosity increases fluorescence as the deactivation due to collision is lowered. A higher fluorescence is observed when the solvents do not contain heavy atoms while phosphorescence increases due to the presence of heavy atoms in the solvent. Now coming to the second part of the lecture that is quenching. So what is a quenching? Quenching is the decrease in fluorescence intensity due to specific effects of the constituents of the solution. Itself it may be due to the various factors like concentration, pH, presence of a specific chemical substance, temperature, viscosity, etc. So what are the types of the quenching? There are various types of the quenching that is the self quenching, the chemical quenching, static quenching and the collision quenching. One by one we can discuss all. The first and important quenching is self quenching which is also known as concentration quenching. Concentration of a solution is also an important factor if we use a dilute solution then we can observe a linear response between the concentration and the fluorescence. This is a linear response if we choose a dilute solution. But if we increase the concentration then the curve become flattened, then the curve become flattened at high concentration because of more amount of collision at higher concentration between the molecules and due to these collision molecules releases energy in the form of heat. So the compound becomes less fluorescent and this phenomenon is called as self quenching or self absorption or concentration quenching. Now the next is the chemical quenching. The quenching which occurs as a result of change in the chemical nature of the fluorescent substance is called chemical quenching and it can be due to change in pH, presence of oxygen, presence of halides, electron withdrawing groups or the presence of heavy metals. For example, aniline at pH 3 to, uh, sorry, 5 to 13 gives fluorescence but at pH less than 5 and more than 13 it does not exhibit fluorescence. Halides like chloride, bromide, iodide and electron withdrawing groups leads to quenching. Heavy metals leads to quenching because of collisions of triplet ground state. The next is the static quenching and it occurs due to the complex formation between the quenched and the fluorescent molecule at ground state. It occurs due to strong complexing between the fluorescent and the quenched. For example, if there is a fluorescent compound and it is complexed with a quench compound and this complex is very strong so it causes quenching and this light cannot be emitted which occurs in the fluorescent radiation. And the last is the collisional quenching. It reduces the fluorescence by collision where number of collisions increased as the quenching takes place. So this is all about different factors affecting fluorescence spectroscopy. If you like this video, please do subscribe my channel. Just click on the subscribe button below this video and do share with your friends. Thank you for watching.